So now I want to consider the heat diffusion uh, analogy in more mathematical terms and uh, write, uh, express it as a linear differential equation. H is the heat that develops over time. This is a time derivative of H uh, and that equals um, the current heat in the reservoirs times some constant matrix L that reflects the heat diffusion coefficient along the tubes. If you spell it out in component uh, form here, it looks like this. H1 dot equals minus L11 H1 minus L12 H2 minus L13 H3. And this line here represents the change of the heat reservoir in the first um, reservoir that receives heat from H2 and also from H3 and it loses heat to the other nodes according to constant L11 and likewise for the other nodes here. Now since all the heat that one node gives to the others has to add up sort of to the heat that the others receive from that node uh, we have the relationship that so um, so here L21 and L31 are the coefficients that tell how much heat flows from H1 to H2 or from H1 to H3. So this is so the sum of these two coefficients times H1 is the heat that H1 loses to the other ones and this is exactly this term. So L L11 should be L1, L21 plus L31 but with a negative sign because these guys gain the heat and this one loses the heat, right? So because it's a gain, these one L1, L21 and L31 should be negative. Actually all components with mixed indices should be negative while those on the diagonal should be positive. So another property is since no heat gets lost or, 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 or um, gained, uh, we've already used that one. Uh, the sum over these components, uh, these components, and these components adds up to one uh, to zero. And this physics that I've just discussed imposes constraints on the Laplacian matrix. So here you see this um, summarized. So the heat diffusion uh, is supposed to be symmetric, so it goes in one direction as in the other direction. If it weren't like that, then you could uh, build a perpetuum mobile, uh, which is not possible because sort of if you had, if these two coefficients were were different and you would connect two heat reservoirs with equal temperature, uh, th there would be more heat. Um, diffusing from the one to the other than the other way around and therefore one would be hotter, would become hotter, the other one cooler and that would allow you to build a perpetuum mobile. So that's not allowed. So the matrix has to be symmetric. That's one thing. Then because no heat uh, gets lost or gained, the sum over the rows as well as the columns uh, add up to zero. And as, I, if I, as I've just argued, the diagonal elements are non-negative um, and the uh, off-diagonal elements are non-positive. So an example of such a matrix is shown here. So we have positive diagonal elements, we have negative off-diagonal -di elements, and the rows and the columns add up to zero. So these are the condition of the Laplacian matrix, and it's symmetric. Now if you consider this Laplacian matrix, it obviously has three nodes. Corresponding to the three columns are also the three rows. Yeah. And we see that uh, the connection between the nodes number 1 and 2 has a strength of 
and this connection has a strength of 0 0.8. It happens here that uh, the two numbers add up to 1, but that's not necessary. This is an, sort of an accident of this example. Uh, so this gives rise to this minus 0 0.2 here and here, and the minus 0 0.8 here and here. And then the diagonal elements simply result from taking the sum of these or the sum of over this, which is just the 0 0.2. Yeah. 